So I just got out of the water after sniping a good nine hours and I'm pretty sure I found one of my biggest gold nuggets. So stay tuned, you're gonna love this video. Oopsie daisies. All right, so today is gonna be a fun day. We're at the river, we're gonna do some shallow sniping for a little while until I kinda get warmed up, if that makes sense. But then, because I brought the hookah system here, we're gonna go deeper underwater and see if we can uncover some bigger pieces of gold. All right, here's to a good day. So today will be a long one. I don't normally shallow snipe and hookah dive in the same day, but I'm motivated to cover as much ground as possible before the bad weather rolls in. The water downstream is pretty orange for some reason, so it's probably mineralization of the water, but hopefully you can see this piece. She's a small piece of candy, but at least we're not going home with nothing. Yeah. Now to find a million more. It's good that it's flowing right here, but it's also really annoying because it's just constantly hitting you in the head. So this narrow stretch of river is interesting. Sometimes you see gold or even heavy iron stones sitting on these rocks, so that's sort of what I'm looking for. I found this little stream coming down and there's a pinch point. So I'm kind of just moving stuff out of the way. Saw another piece of gold. When you're sniping for gold, there are basic guides to follow to increase your chances. You can check that here on my how to snipe for gold video. But most of the time, because you can cover so much ground, you should just be checking everywhere. Working a little bit deeper. I'm frozen. And I found a really flat one. The flat ones are the ones that often get missed because they can slip in the tiniest of cracks. I don't know if you can tell, that's really flat. Cool. There's a couple more pieces down there but it was really hard to see without the flashlight. I'm gonna suck them up without the flashlight because I only have two hands. Using a flashlight definitely makes a huge difference, especially in those darker areas. But on camera, it's obviously hard to see what's going on, so I'll try to keep that to a minimum. I worked this spot for a while as there were a lot of rocks that were really hard to remove. The idea is to remove those rocks and see if there's gold underneath them at the bottom of the crevice, but I didn't see anything else, so I moved on. But not before warming back up. Marching out, keep it going. This is gonna start off your warm up. Step touch to the right. Here you go. Step touch. Feeling strong already. Ready to go? We're gonna start off with that right arm back. I just came back to the spot where I started rolled a big boulder out of the way. And now I'm back on hard path, finding a whole bunch of little gold. I'm happy to do that all day. I don't need to find anything big. But you actually do because it makes me feel really good. There's also a lot of yellow rock, so on camera, it's gonna look like I'm missing a whole bunch of gold, but trust me, it it's really obvious. Just found the biggest one of the day so far. This one was hard to suck up and required tweezers, which is against my religion, so I just picked it up with my fingers. But obviously that didn't work. Eventually I was able to find it again and I managed to pick it up and rescue it. So I found a little pinch point that had a lot of gold in it, but the white water is just too 
much to film, too much to see. So I spent like 20 minutes moving rocks around and trying to find the best angle to, to be able to get it. And I found a tiny pocket full of little gold. Like I always say, the gold always looks bigger underwater. All these pieces were able to go up the straw, so they're not that big, but there was a lot of it there. So I'll turn the camera around and show you where I'm working. And uh, I also gotta find my scratcher tool because I must have buried it somewhere. I found my scratcher tool. So I didn't lose it. So I'm working in this little pinch point right here. Really hard to see. I made a little bit of a dam, but I'm trying to raise it even more, but whatever. When you build a dam, it raises the water level, which relieves the pressure from a rapid, allowing you to work a little easier. The water's still flowing pretty good here, but it's better than what it was. There's a lot of small gold here and what I like to say is small gold makes you cold because often you're staying still for long periods of time trying to pick up every single piece. And the gold does add up but the last thing I want to do is go for another warm up. So a few more pieces then let's get out and go upstream to dive deeper. It's been about 40 minutes since I had lunch now. I gathered all the gear up, I hiked upstream, and now we're at the pools to do some deeper diving. But before we do that, I'm gonna show you the gold that we found so far. <laughs> there we have it. Ignore the lead. That was already in the snuffer bottle, but we have some candy. That's a nice, chunky, flat piece right there. Very good. Now, I'm already starting to get cold, so let's suit up. Oh, already suited. Let's put on the hookah system and explore the depths of the deeper abyss. Before I explore deeper, I wanted to quickly check out a spot that stood out to me. I just showed up, moved a couple rocks out of the way, and I followed this little crack. I just spotted a nice piece. Oh yeah. This piece was hard to get out, but eventually I saved it. Right. <laughs> Not bad. Always looks bigger underwater, but that's a, uh, a decent piece. Hey, where'd it go? When putting on my weight belt, I noticed I had broke the clips when hiking in, so I bandaged it with some zap straps and I was ready. All right. Now the real work begins. Randomly clean out cracks and crevices in hopes to rescue more scared pieces of gold and tough out the fact that I forgot to put my gloves back on. Now because I'm wearing my neoprene thermals under my wetsuit now, I'm much more buoyant than normal and because I didn't compensate this by adding more weight to my belt, it was harder to stay down there. I was having trouble locating cracks in the bedrock because of the amount of gravel I had to shove out of the way. That and how silty it was. A lot of the cracks I did check didn't have any gold in them either, but it's important never to get discouraged because one of them could be loaded. And even though I'm super tough, I put my gloves back on so I didn't hurt my beautiful hands. The gloves, however, must be good luck because we found our biggest piece so far. I just turned on the hookah system and we already found a nice little bit. Probably about half a gram. 
I continued to take my time and look around, but probably not even a minute later, my biggest Canadian nugget would reveal itself. Okay, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that I always say that gold looks bigger underwater, and it does due to refraction. You might not be able to tell through the, through the camera, but when you're wearing a mask, everything does look bigger. Anyways, I just found a nice piece of gold, but I didn't react right away. I was like, well, this piece may just look bigger underwater. So I put my thumb up to it and it's a decent looking nugget. So let me show you. So I'll try to film it the best I can while holding a light and the camera. So this is what it's all about. Not only getting outside to look and find some gold, but to find something special. <laughs> it actually takes me a minute to find it again. <laughs> I had to go easy on my reaction because I also had to focus on my breathing. Look at that guy. Oh my goodness. That's gotta be, I would say four or five grams. It could be six grams, but. Uh. Oh. <laughs> Oops. Yeah, leave it up to me to drop it. Okay, let's not do that again. Yeah, so I'm thinking four or five grams. I don't know, but that's our biggest piece so far today. We're probably not going to beat it at all today, but I mean, I am stoked with that. Stay right there. Don't move. So this area, I haven't been finding much gold other than a couple pickers and then that big nugget. So it's a good problem to have. I mean, I'd rather find big nuggets and small gold, but it's getting really difficult to stay in the water because how freaking cold it is. I keep taking these gloves off and on because with my regular hands, I'm able to pick things up. And with this, it kind of restricts your hand movement. So let me put that nugget in the stuffer bottle and not lose it. Now, because we just found a nice piece of gold along this crevice, we absolutely need to check it out and the surrounding area for anything else. Often, big gold hangs out with other big pieces of gold. All right, so I just dove this pool here and now it's really, really murky and I can't see anymore. So I'm gonna take my weights off and I'm just gonna do some shallower sniping until it starts to get dark because it's already getting late. Plus I need to go downstream a little bit and find Bailey. I wanna see his reaction to the nugget I found. So yeah, I'm gonna take off this broken weight belt. Do some, ow, <laughs> ow, hit my ankle. Do some more shallower sniping and then we'll call it a day. A good day. I spent another hour or so working the crevices but wasn't finding much other than some rusty pieces of metal. I even circled back to look at what I've already done but came out empty handed so it was time to get out and celebrate. Okay, I am done for the day. That was a really long day sniping. So most of the day we sniped in the shallows, which we did pretty good. Then we came up upstream and who could dive the deeper water and then I tried sniping for a little bit longer in the shallows but I couldn't do it. I'm done. Let's dump out the snuffer bottle, see what we got for the day, and then I'm excited to see Bailey's reaction. Okay, I have the flash on for a little bit more excitement. Oh my god. <laughs> oh god, that's a nice one. Let's get it all out. I have some ironstone in there just to help weigh this thing down. Okay, let me get this a little bit more clean for you guys. Oh my goodness. That was a very good day. I'm surprised to see that there's not much fine gold further up here. Before I actually used the hookah system, I found this little flat flake here, but then not too long after that, the thicker bit, which is maybe a little more than that first piece. Then of course, the big fat slug of gold. I wanna say that this piece has gotta be six grams. You know what, like possibly even seven grams, but it's just so thick, so I'm gonna guess between six and seven grams. So how'd you do today, Bailey? Pretty good. Got a picker. A picker? Got some nice flakes. Look at this. No, you. I was guessing between six and seven. Jesus. How much do you think that one weighs? Eight grams. Eight grams? 
It's just so fast. That's, you're joking. Drop in the pan. Jeez. <laughs> So basically the small stuff was from way downstream before you arrived and then when we met up I went into the water and then we found the bigger bits. Wow, that's freaking huge. <laughs> so Bailey is just gonna dump out his snuffer bottle. Watch her find like 10 huge nuggets. Oh, that's not bad. You were panning, weren't you? Yeah. Yeah, Bailey was gonna come sniping with me but I forgot his wetsuit. So. I was gonna borrow Paul's because mine has a holes whole in it. bunch of holes. Yeah, I forgot to do it. It's my fault. Hey, that nugget you probably would have found. Which one? <laughs> the big oh, one. Yeah. <laughs> Not tea bag. Yeah, that's good enough. Very good. Yeah, any day you find gold is a good day. Yeah. Okay, so while Bailey plays with the gold and does not lose it, oh. I'm gonna pack up all the gear. We gotta hike back downstream, and then, yeah, we'll drive home, dry the gold, and weigh everything. And I'm hoping it's gonna be over one gram. It's definitely gonna be over a gram. We are back, warm and dry, looking at our loot. This is one of our better days looking for candy underwater as we've found quite a variety. We've got a number of course pieces that were found further downstream which tells us there's more than one vein the gold is coming from which definitely deserves more investigating. Upstream the gold got bigger the deeper we went which makes sense as gold is very heavy and likes to sink. I would be more than satisfied with just these nuggets but the mineral gods blessed us with this fat chunk of gold. I was very surprised to see this especially as I didn't do much to uncover it, it was only buried under some sand, and I was about five and a half feet deep. I'm gonna guess it's between five and seven grams. All right, so let's weigh everything, starting with our first little nugget. I'm gonna guess it's one gram. 0.95, so I was pretty close. Nugget number two, I'm gonna guess 1.3 grams. One gram, 1.01, that should have been my last guess. Okay, before we weigh the big nugget, I really wanna Oh, that sounds so good. I'm gonna weigh the fine stuff first. Two grams? 3.2 grams, so already over five grams. What do you weigh, little bugger? Okay, moment of truth. I'm gonna say an accurate guess of, God, I don't know, Se uh, seven grams? I'm just gonna say seven grams, see what happens. 10.61, <laughs> holy shit. I did not expect that to be that heavy. Holy, I guess it is really fat. Oh my God, just to be sure. Yeah, 10.6, oh my God. So 10.6 grams, that means that is my biggest Canadian gold nugget that I found right next to my 9.1 gram nugget, which means this nugget takes fourth place on my all time big nugget find list. And the speeding ticket I got this morning? 1.45, not bad. So all together, that means that's gonna be over a quarter ounce. 15.78 grams. So that's about $1,800 Canadian if that were fine gold. But because this isn't fine gold and there's chunky pieces in here, that's gonna be way more expensive. Luckily, I don't sell the gold, but what I do do, <laughs> do do, is I put gold up for auction starting at $1. Now, I'm not ready to give away that piece for $1 just yet, but uh, I'm gonna start with this piece. So again, this piece, tear that out, weighs a million ounces. Yeah, 102, so this gold nugget will go on pioneerpoly.com where you can bid $1 and hopefully this piece will be yours. Thanks for watching.